Next, we will learn how to read the data in from a data file. So you see in the example right now, we have these hard-coded values being passed in, for example, for the C root, the C tip, the span, and so on. So let's take all of the hard-coded values in our code and make them into a data file. Now, the most simple function in Lisp for reading from a file is simply called read. If your data is already in a format that Lisp can understand, a simple call to read will be sufficient to get all the data into your program. So whenever you have control over the data files, it makes sense to keep them in this kind of format. Here's a sample data file, and it looks similar to a Lisp file, but this does not contain program code. It simply contains a plist, a literal form. So it starts off with a parenthesis, and then we have alternating keyword symbols and values, and keywords and values. So we can easily read this into our program as follows. First, we'll save a new version of the preview plane. The first thing we have to do is establish the path name, or the location of the file name in the file system. So we'll do that with a parameter. We set a parameter to, first of all, a data folder where we expect to find our data file. And during development, it can be especially convenient to set this data folder relative to the source code path name. In order to establish the source code path name in Allegro CL, which we are running currently, we can use excl colon source path name. And relative to the source path name, we can merge another path name where we expect to find the data file. And in this case, I know my data directory is up two directory levels from where the source file is, and then down into a directory called data. So we can merge a relative path name that looks like this into the source path name. We just want a pure directory here. We do not want an actual file name. So we'll use the common Lisp make path name function to construct a new path name with nil for its name, nil for its type, and for the rest of its defaults, in other words, its directory, its drive letter, we will use this excl colon source path name. In the near future, Gendel will be providing a function called glist colon source path name, which will return the path name regardless of what common list you are running on. Default is defaults. Now we can test that the data folder is in the correct location. So I'll simply evaluate this parameter data folder at the top level, and it looks reasonable. It's a full path name that ends with the word data. To confirm that that directory actually exists, we can use the common list function probe file, and that returns a full path name as well. So that ensures that this directory does exist. Now we can establish an input slot for our preemie plane that has that actual data file. First of all, we'll establish the data file name by default will be this aircraft 1.dat. That's the data file that I've created already. And now we'll establish a computed slot which will compute the full path name to that file so that we are able to open it up. And we'll call that the data file path. That's the full path to the data file. And for that, we can simply merge path names of the data file name with the data folder. And we should have established an input slot for the data folder as well, which defaults to this parameter data folder. You don't want to be using too many global parameters throughout your code, so it's a good idea simply to bind an input slot at the very top to this data folder and then refer to the value of that input slot when we use it later on. So let's go ahead and compile this now. We have an unmatched bracket. That would be right here. Now we can make an instance of this preemie plane and test that our data folder and data file name actually exist. Make a self of type preemie plane. Now the data folder exists according to probe file, and the data file path exists. Now how do we open this file and read the contents? We'll set up another computed slot for doing this and call it simply the data list. And to do this, we'll use a macro called with open file. With open file takes a list of specifications with a handle, which is a name that you can make up, which becomes attached to the input stream from the file and then the path name for the file, which in this case will be the data file path that we've established right here. Within the with open file, we'll simply make a single call to read on the input stream, and that should be enough to fetch the entire contents into a list. So let's test that. We have our instance already, so if I save the update here, that will update the instance to reflect any changes in code that we have recently compiled. And now let's look for the data list. And sure enough, that looks like the plist with our data in it. 